Good morning. Welcome to Marine Baptist Church Sunday service. I normally say good morning, and then you all will respond back, right? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Marine Baptist Church Sunday service. Our word for today is sin. Let's begin our service by standing and singing hymn number 95 at the cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I had done, he suffered on the tree? Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in. When Christ the mighty maker died, for man the creature's sin. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away, tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Let's remain standing for a word of prayer. Dear God, as we gather today to learn about you, I ask that your Holy Spirit will pour out knowledge of your word on us and that you will give us hearts to follow you. We understand that your truth is the truth that will lead us correctly. And we ask that you will give us wisdom to do your will and follow the path that you have given us to follow. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Let's sing hymn number 495, It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, my sin of oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed 
so it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul O Lord haste thy day when my face shall be sight the clouds be rolled back as a scroll the trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul amen at this time i'm going to ask pam to come and bring a reading from billy graham wisdom for each day today's reading is entitled uh, a spiritual virus and the Bible verse is 2 Peter 3.11. What kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. Do you remember the last time you had the flu? You probably felt terrible and with good reason. That flu virus had invaded your whole body and it made you weak all over. This is what sin is like. Sin is like a sp spiritual virus that has invaded our lives, making us morally and spiritually weak and we will never be completely free of it this side of eternity. The only sinless person who ever lived was Jesus Christ. Why is this? Why can't we be sinless in this life? We, why can't we become perfect? One reason is because sin has weakened us so much that we don't have the strength to overcome its power. Sin is like a deadly disease that infects every part of us, our body, our mind, our emotions, our relationships, our motives, everything. But when we come to Christ, another spiritual power takes up residence within us, the Holy Spirit. Learn to take sin seriously. Be on guard against it, resist its tug, fight its power. But most of all, learn to take the Holy Spirit seriously, calling on him to help you overcome sin's power and live a holy and godly life. Amen. Our starting point Bible verse for today, 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, our King Savior and Lamb of God, who takes our sins and makes us righteous in your sight. We pray that you will show us what he is that makes him perfect and give us the hearts that we need to do life his way. Thank you for the blessings that you pour out on us when we live life how you want us to live life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In your walk with Jesus, you will encounter people who will try to discourage you from studying the Old Testament. We are living in the New Testament age, they will tell you. And that is true. But Jesus and the people that wrote the New Testament, studied and endorsed the Old Testament. The Old Testament was their scripture. This is what they taught us. The question I think we need to ask is, what is new about 
the New Testament? And I think I have the answer. I think the New and the New Testament is the world. The Old Testament told the story of God and the children of Israel who were rescued and saved because they were children of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, who marched under their father's ensign. God told Moses, ensign, Numbers 2.2, 2. every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house, far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. You have seen ensigns like this one that the Romans carried at the front of their army. They are also known as standards. Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. Their ensigns represented each family tribe. They were God's people because of genes, genetics, family, physical birth. But hundreds of years before Jerusalem and the children of Israel fell, Isaiah prophesied another family. Isaiah 11.10 And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. The root of Jesse Jesse was King David's dad, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. The Jewish champion, the Messiah, to it shall the Gentiles seek. And the New Testament is a story of Jesus' children who march under the ensign of their spiritual father, Jesus Christ, who are grafted into the vine because of belief and trust in the Savior. And we, the world, are God's saved because we are in Jesus. But the New Testament writers told us we needed to obey the Old Testament. In 1 Corinthians 10.6 in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul explains the Old Testament was written to give us examples of evil warning us not to lust after evil. 1 Corinthians 10.6 says, Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. In 1 Timothy 4.12, Paul encouraged Timothy to be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, which is love, in spirit, 
in faith and in purity. In Hebrews 4.11, Paul writes us to labor as a good example, lest any man fall, because they see our example and follow and fall. And on the next picture, I'm going to show you verses out of the Bible where God talks about his enemies who blaspheme him because of his people who mock him with their example. And we've all heard that. Someone says, look at him. He thinks he's so whatever, and he doesn't even do whatever, okay? And people make fun of the church and Jesus and Christians because of our example. Isaiah 52, 5 is an example. Now, therefore, what have I heard, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. In 2 Samuel 12, 14, Samuel wrote, How be it, by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall, shall surely die. This last verse was particularly interesting to me. God tells David and Bathsheba their baby that was born out of their adulterous relationship is going to die because they had given the enemies of God an occasion to blaspheme. In Hebrews 8, 5, Paul writes of the example and shadow of heavenly things which are shown in the wilderness tabernacle. And, and I've written five things that we learn from that. First of all, God in the ark, center stage. Second, daily bread, God's word. Third, candlestick, we're supposed to walk in the light. Altar, sacrifice, and seek forgiveness. And number five, the table of incense was prayers. In James 5.10, James speaks of the prophets, of their example, who suffered affliction and showed patience. 1 Peter 2.21, Peter speaks of Jesus' example that we should follow his steps. Lastly, Jude 1.7, Jude reminds us what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah when they went after strange flesh. And we will do well if we learn the basic principles that are taught in these examples, but God has given us his whole word because we may be put in a situation that does not necessarily follow the pattern that we are used to seeing. That is good, blessed, bad, cursed. And one of the ways that God reminded us that he blessed and cursed was in the example of Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. Now, I have a picture here of um, some, an artist's idea of what Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal look like on the rock formations there. And we'll see on a map here in a minute. It was in the northern part of Israel and uh, near uh, around S Samaria. And um, you see, um, it was one mile wide. And Mount Gerizim would have been, if we're facing west, would have been south and Mount Ebal 
would have been right. And right in about the center, you see the town of Shechem, and, and you see an arrow there, Joshua's altar. The best I can tell, Gerizim and Ebal, Ebal appear in, I think it's four places in the Bible. We're going to look at three of them. Deuteronomy 11:29, And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee in unto the land, whether thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side of Jordan? As they faced the promised land, they were on, on uh, this side of Jordan. So it would have been on the other side of the Jordan River, by the way where the sun goeth down in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the Champagne over against Gilgal, beside the plains of Moray. For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day. Now Deuteronomy is Moses' last words to the people. And he's getting ready to turn um, control leadership over to Joshua. And a third one, Deuteronomy 27, 12, 13. The blessing of Mount Gerizim and the curse of Mount Ebal. And he talks about Gerizim and Ebal again. And Mount Gerizim will, where the people will be blessed and Mount Ebal, where the people will be cursed. Okay, now, this is significant. These are God's people. I mean, he's already uh, wiped out a bunch of the bad ones that, that couldn't seem to mind, and they're still talking about needing them to be good, and they'll be blessed if they do life God's way, and cursed if they don't if they do something else. And when Joshua got to the promised land, we read, and all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side the ark and on that side before the priests, the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well the strangers, he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim, and half of them over against Mount Ebal, as Moses, a servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And God blessed Joshua with blessings, like the one pictured where the walls came tumbling down at Jericho, because he did life the Gerizim way and followed God's word. But the Bible is filled with examples of people who did not. King Solomon was King David's son, and he did a lot that was right, but he worshiped idols with his wives. Solomon reigned 40 years, died, and his son Rehoboam became king. At that point, when Rehoboam became king, God divided the 12 tribes of Israel. The northern portion of Israel, 10 tribes, was known during that ensuing period as Israel. They had their own king, Jeroboam. The southern portion of Israel was known as Judah. Bethlehem was also part of that during this period, and they had their own king. And this 
shows up on the chart of the kings. We've got Rehoboam uh, south, and above that we've got Jeroboam, and their lives overlapped. I want to call your attention to something else in the chart. This pale green line right below the red cloud. This line starts at Jeroboam, drops down, stays flat across the timeline of the 12 tribes of Israel, and disappears completely. This green line represents Israel's spiritual condition, which was bad. And we know why. Their first king, Jeroboam, got them started off on the wrong foot. Jeroboam led them astray. He feared that the people would go to Jerusalem to worship. He decided to build his gods a place in Dan and in Bethel. Make worship simple. Put the fun back into it. Jeroboam got rid of God's priests from the tribe of Levi. God set all that up and Jeroboam rejected it. We have, uh, I think, five points here. Jeroboam said in his heart he would set up two calves, idols of gold. He made priests of his people. He ordained his feasts and life was going Jeroboam's way. His heart, his idols, his priests, his special days. They thought they could ignore God's word. And the 10 tribes paid the price. In Exodus, we find that God directed Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and made a covenant with them that he would be their God if they would obey him. Exodus 15, 26, Moses said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And Moses' instruction, that which is altogether just shalt thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your church and calling us into it. We pray that you will show us how you want us to live and how to use the talents and abilities that you have given us in order to serve you in your kingdom. We pray that you will guide us and that we will bless you with our lives like you have blessed us with yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Yeah.